In this video, I will explain how to propagate uncertainty through an exponential function, and then I will explain how to add the error bars. And actually, I'll do the error bars first. So let's say we have, we did our experiment, right, which in this case, uh, we had an independent variable of mass, a dependent variable of time, we tried a log-log graph, it wasn't straight, so then we took a natural log of all the dependent variable values, so all the time measurements. We used the, and then, as it turned out, the semi-log graph with ln of time, the dependent variable, against the independent variable. That was straight, and in fact, the slope of that straight semi-log graph was equal to 0.3, and that slope right there is our lambda. So the last graph we made was uh, the dependent variable, which in this case was time, against e to the lambda i, which in this case is e to the 0.3 times mass. Watch this video in HD, by the way. And here's how I've shown the units for my lambda. OK, then. Now that I have the va uh, these values, I made a final linear graph, it's shown here. I finished up my equation, that's what's shown here. If I want, I can highlight this. I hit Control, Shift, Plus, and that's the keyboard shortcut for superscript on a PC. Okay, there it is. The last thing to do is add error bars to this original raw data graph and I have to add error bars to my final graph. We'll start with the raw data, because it's easier. So, you click on the graph, the plus comes up, you choose error bars, and now some error bars are there. But they don't have the correct quantities. These error bars uh, have been filled in for us. So I'm gonna right click and format the error bars so that I can select the correct quantities. The vertical error bars are what I've selected first. Vertical error bars tell me the uncertainty in the vertical quantity, the y quantity. Look at this raw data table. Every time has the same uncertainty of plus or minus 0.7 seconds. So I want a fixed value of 0.7 as the error bars uh, in time, or the vertical error bars. Good. That's that. So I finished the vertical error bars, right? They have a fixed value of 0.7. Now let's click on the horizontal error bars. This just changed to horizontal. Horizontal error bars tell you the uncert the absolute uncertainty in the x quantity, which is mass. Every mass, according to this data table, has an absolute uncertainty of plus or minus 0.5. So let's choose fixed value and change it to 0.5. Enter, and that's that. Okay, that was easy. Now let's do the same thing over here. This will be a little harder. I right click, oh, no I don't. I hit the plus error bars. Now I have to modify the error bars so that they reflect the correct uncertainties. The vertical error bars, that's the uncertainty in time. And the absolute uncertainty in time is still plus or minus 0.7. So I right click, format, I choose a fixed value of 0.7. I hit enter just to make sure it is applied to my graph. Now the hard part. The hard part is figuring out what these horizontal error bars should be. After all, they're going to reflect the, uncert the absolute uncertainty in e to the power of 0.3m. And that's a weird, weird thing to have uncertainty in. Right? We need to know what is the absolute uncertainty in this whole mess. So I'm going to say, at the end, we need to have the absolute uncertainty. I'm going to take this down from superscript. superscript that. What is it that we're going to put as our horizontal error bars? 
it's going to be the absolute uncertainty in this whole thing. In other words, the abs absolute uncertainty in these x values. These are the x values for this graph. What are these values uncertainty? Well, here's the thing. These values will fluctuate higher or lower based upon fluctuations in mass. And how does the mass fluctuate? It could go as high as 0.5 grams higher or each of these masses could be 0.5 grams lower. So let's figure out, let's simulate what's the fluctuation in these values if the mass were 0.5 grams higher and if the mass were 0.5 grams lower. In other words, the first thing I'm going to calculate is going to be this value, but instead of using mass, I'm going to pretend it's mass plus the uncertainty of 0.5 grams. So here I'm going to say mass plus the uncertainty, insert symbol, double click, mass plus the uncertainty in mass. All right, here's what that looks like. Equals exponent 1, that's how I get Excel to use the value Euler's number, E. Then I have to raise it, open to parentheses, to the power of 0.3 times the mass plus that 0.5 uncertainty. Enter. And I'm going to copy this all the way down. So here's what the values would be. It would be 5.2 instead of 4.5 if it had been a mass of 5.5. Now let's simulate the fluctuation on the other end. What if we instead plug in, whoops, what if we instead imagine that the mass had fluctuated down to 4.5 grams? In that case, we would have equals exponent 1 to the power of 0.3 times the mass minus the uncertainty. Enter. And I bring this down. So this value of 4.5, let's make these a little simpler. Home, and I'm going to take away some decimal points. This first x value right here is 4.5, right? 4.5, there it is. But it could have been as high as 5.2, and it could have been as low as 3.9. So my error bars, my vertical, my horizontal error bars, should reflect this range from 5.2 to 3.9, and that is the central value. What's the absolute uncertainty? It's going to be half the range. The bigger value minus the smaller, in parentheses, over 2. And that right there tells me how much each side should be. It should go, this, this first error bar should go to the left 0.7 and to the right 0.7. And I'm going to drag this down. Absolute uncertainty is what I have in this column. It can only have one sig fig, so I need to take away a decimal point from these. And that's it. I click the error bar. I already have my format, uh, my format box up. I want this last option. And then I'm going to choose a custom value. What should I specify as the uncertainty? It could be higher by this amount plus that amount or lower minus by that amount plus or minus I hit OK and that's that and move this around and that my friends is how you propagate uncertainty through an exponential function